previous example we looked at, we assumed that our output units would be exactly equal to our input units. So if we input a thousand units of material, our output will be a thousand units of material. In reality, it is highly unlikely that this will be the case. So in process costing environments, a company would expect to lose a certain number of units of material as part of their normal production process. So perhaps if a company inputs a thousand units, they would expect their output to be maybe 800 units. This is referred to as our normal loss. So our normal loss are losses that are expected as part of the production process. And management will understand how many units they expect to lose in any given process and will therefore plan for it in advance. Now for F2, what we need to understand is how we deal with normal loss in our process account and how does this affect our cost per unit calculation. So let's have a look at an example. We are told then for this company a process has a normal loss of 5% which can be sold for £5 per tonne. Our inputs for a particular period were 160 units of material costing £23 each. And we also incurred some labour and overhead costs of £3,200. So, we want to calculate the cost per tonne or the cost per unit and prepare our process account for the period. Just a little bit of terminology before we get started. Often in process costing, our labour and our overheads will be given to us as a total figure and they may be referred to as conversion costs. So conversion costs is just the sum of our labour and our overheads for a particular process. So moving into our example then, we've got our process account and we know we are going to show our input costs on the debit side and our outputs on the credit side. And we're going to record our unit values and our monetary values. So, what is our first input to this process? Well, we have been told that our materials for the period were 160 units, costing £23 each. So, our total material cost, if you put that into your calculators, you should get 3,680. Our next input cost then was our labour and our overheads for 3,200. We'll just put this in as our conversion costs. We have no unitary value attached to our conversion costs and the total was 3,200. So our input cost then we just record as normal. It's when we get to our output side that we need to consider our normal loss. So on our credit side, on our output side, the first thing we will always show is our normal loss. So for this company, normal loss will be how many units? Well, we're told normal loss is 5% and this will be 5% of our units input. So normal loss is almost always expressed as a percentage of the units we input. 
So for this company then, our normal loss will be 160 by 5%. So you should get 8 units. If we have lost 8 units, how many units are we outputting to the next process or to finished goods? Well, we input 160 units, we expect to lose um, 8 units, so we would expect our output to be 152 units. And we were told in the question that all losses were normal, which means we lost exactly 8 units. So the last thing we need to consider then is our valuations. In our process account, what is the value, first of all, of our normal loss? Well, normal loss are units which we have lost in production. So they are not going to continue on to become finished goods. So in that sense, they have no value to the company. Therefore, we would expect the value in our process account to be zero. We're not going to be able to sell these units. However, we have been told in the question that the normal loss units can be sold for £5 per tonne. This is the scrap value of our normal loss. So it would be common for a company if they lose units um, of their materials in the process, even though those units are not going to continue on to finished goods, they do have some residual value in that we are able to sell them for scrap. But the scrap value will be much lower um, than the value they would have had had they continued on to finished goods. So scrap value would be given to you in a question. In this case, we're told it's £5 per tonne. So the value in the process account of our normal loss is 8 units with a value of £5 each, so £40 in total. So the last thing we have then is to give a value to our output to finished goods. Well, we know our process account has to balance, so we can calculate this as a balancing figure. If we do our total input costs, we get 6,880. Our units balance. So if we calculate the value of our output as a balancing figure, it will be 6,880 minus 40, so 6,840. So the total value of our output to finished goods then is 6,840. Let's finish out our accounts and then we'll consider one or two more things. We also have to consider our scrap sales account. So in our scrap sales account we record all of the units which we are selling for scrap. So the debit side, on the debit side we show increases in the number of units we're selling for scrap. And on the credit side we will record any reduction in the number of units we are selling for scrap. Again we will record our units and our monetary value So from process one then, we have our normal loss of 8 units, which we are selling for £40 scrap. Now we're not reducing the number of units we're selling in any way, we're just going to sell these 8 units for £40 scrap value. So to close out our account for the month, we just show the receipt of cash to the company for those 8 units, which will be the £40 and our scrap sales account balances. Now, the 
last thing we want to consider then, in relation to our normal loss section, is the way in which we have valued our output to finished goods. Now I know we calculated this as a balancing figure in our process account. However, there is a key formula we will always use to calculate our cost per unit of good output. Our cost per unit of good output will always be equal to our total input costs minus the scrap value of normal loss divided by our expected output. Where our expected output is equal to our input units minus our normal loss units. So, what we are doing here as a company, because our normal loss is expected and we plan for it, we spread the cost of our normal loss across the remaining units of good output. If we apply this formula to the exercise we've just looked at, our cost per unit would be equal to our total input costs, which we said were 6,880, minus the scrap value of our normal loss, 40 pounds, divided by our expected output. So our input units minus our normal loss units, which would give us a cost per unit of 45 pounds. So the total value of our good output is the number of units of good output, 152, multiplied by 45, which gives us the 6840. This cost per unit formula is a key formula for the process costing section. Make sure you have noted it down and that you learn it.